Hello, I, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I just woke up like 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, then you came to the right place. We're going to start yeah. you off with a smile. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> okay, now you're on Team Nile, but you didn't begin on Team Nile. You began on Team Blake. Um, tell us what, 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 what happened in your battle. So uh, I battled against this amazing singer named Tasha. Uh, Jessen. Blake ended up picking her, which I kind of had a feeling um, that she was going to win. I think he just super loved her voice. And even from like the rehearsals, I'm like, oh, she's got this in the bag. So I got to bring the heat. <laughs> I, knew I, I knew I had to really step it up if I wanted to be stolen onto another team. It's kind of like the feeling I had. But um, Nile was always my first pick. I, mm-hmm. even before. I picked Blake. Um, I always wanted to be on Team Nile because his lane of music is just like right down where I'm going with my my solo music project. And I just really, from the get-go, but he didn't turn for me that first time and I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointment reigns supreme. <laughs> I know. But then like the whole time, I remember after in the, in the blinds, he's like, oh, I'm regretting this. Like I should have turned. And then the second time, he's like, I don't know what was wrong with me. I had earplugs in or something. He's like, your stage presence is out of this world. Um, and, you know, and then when he, when, you know, I was walking off the stage, I'm like, bye, see you guys. Like, both Chance and Niall press their seal buttons. And I'm like, holy shit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, go. I'm, I'm ready. Going home. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. And I, I just knew at that moment – all the crowd around me were like, no, because he had so many fans. In yes. There. I, I just, I don't know. I, I also kind of felt this tinge of guilt because I'm like, I want to pick Nile, but I mean, chances he's like, he turned for me very first. Mm-hmm. Like he, I didn't see that he pressed his steal button right before Nile did. Um, and I also didn't hear him, you know, when I was walking on stage, you could hear him, EJ, like such a fan because you're so in the moment. You don't really hear those things. Yeah, the adrenaline. It's like you broke up with him twice. I know. <laughs> I, I rejected him twice. I was like, oh my God, people are going to give me crap for this. But I'm like, I got to go with, I'm like, I got to go with my heart and, and do what I want to do rather than like what I think people want me to do. Yes. When it, when it comes to the blinds, I mean, people have said that it, it's very hard um, to even see what's going on because of the lighting and everything else. Can can you see if somebody's turned for you um, during the blind? Yeah, um, you can. And <laughs> I remember, because I was sitting down playing piano and I was kind of angled, you know, facing more towards Kelly's chair. Mm-hmm. I remember starting the song. I was really nervous, taking a big breath, and then just getting into it and almost forgetting a lyric, I think in the third line, but I caught myself like right back into it. So I, mm. I did really well of just like saving myself in that moment. But I really thought in my head that it was over because of that tiny mistake of almost forgetting a lyric. Mm-hmm. So then when I started climbing to the chorus, chance turning around really surprised me. I was like, oh my gosh, holy crap. <laughs> Someone turned. <laughs> I'm in. That, I'm doing this. Yeah. Then from that point, I remember kind of blacking out in a sense of like, not really even thinking about just, it's almost like the music and the piano playing just kind of came out of me second nature from that point until Blake turned mm-hmm. around. Then I had a really big smile because I was like, okay, I'm towards the end. Blake just turned around. <laughs> Like the the most nerve wracking moment in my life is about to end. <laughs> is it is it hard to focus when you know? I mean, people have turned for you. I mean, you're you're thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on the show, but you're still trying to focus on playing and singing and remembering all all the lines and all that, and playing the piano is making it even tougher for you. Yeah, it was it was I, it was kind of weird for me because I didn't think like, oh my gosh, like oh I'm on the show now. It was almost like. Um, I still felt like I was able to kind of keep my emotional composure. Like it was almost like I'd have like a, 
a you know a split second of like oh my gosh they turned but then i kind of just like went right back into it again mm. and then i think when blake turned <laughs> i had a big, big smile on my face and i was like oh my gosh blake turned type of a thing and um and i wasn't even thinking about like come on kelly like come on niall turn around mm -hmm. i think i was really happy for anything Happening. Yes, that instant validation. And you did, you absolutely, because I watched that episode and you had, I call it the face crack, your entire face just like cracked right down the middle because it was this huge, genuine smile of, I did it, did it right. And I've got two coaches looking at me right now. I'm going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm also, I'm also such a perfectionist. And I know that Blake saying the moments my voice is breaking up and that performance really added more emotion and rawness mm -hmm. to you know, it helped the, the performance, but just me being such a perfectionist, I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I can hit that high F, you know, and better pitch. And I know I could have hit that very last like growly moment, you know, without the little tiny crack in my voice. I've done it so many times, but I think the combination of the nerves, I had three hours of sleep the night before. I think I overprepared too. I warmed up my voice more than necessary. <laughs> like all of that kind of just added to like this one moment that I've been working towards for 15 plus years. You know? Oh yeah. Well, and you're so hyper adrenalized in that moment that it's like every sensation in your body is probably just wide awake and almost too alive, if you will. Yes. It's almost like a sense of just you're putting too much attention to it that it's like, oh. <gasps> I don't know what to do. Well, and you've been through some personal challenges to really evolve into who you are and find this new confidence in your, your personal life. So I will say as a fan, seeing some of those emotional breaks and your, your honest instincts and reactions emotionally, I find it super inspiring because I just watched your story and read you online too. And I'm like, this person's been through it and is still out there doing it. What do you draw from your personal life other than your baby, your puppy? Is it Franklin? I believe the puppy's name is. Yeah, Franklin. Yeah, Franklin the Cavapoo. Franklin the Cavapoo. I had to put him upstairs because he was, he just barks out the window right in front of me here. And I'm Listen, like, he grew up in a family of music. He knows when the microphone's on, it's game time. <laughs> Literally, though, I teach voice lessons in my town home here. And whenever students come over, and for some reason, when we start singing, he starts barking outside. So he just wants to be part of the music, I guess. Listen, we're married to each other. Our dogs like to bark the minute we turn on the microphone at home sure. to record things, too. So either that or our kids. What is the most inspiring thing that you've been through that you put into your music? Not just the perfection part, but the actual emotional content. Because I've noticed in the songs you choose, like when I watch your eyes, I can tell when you're really connected to a lyric or a note that's happening. Yeah, I love this question. Um, it's kind of a hard one to answer, but... I'll try my best to answer it. Um, you know, besides the things I've been through with my story and coming out and really trying to be more comfortable with my authentic self, you know, every parts of myself, not even just the coming out part, just even like my sense of humor, like every part of myself really accepting and learning to love. Um, I've always, I think it was in ninth grade when I had my first really deep connection with music before then music was always like oh i love this song like it's a it's a great tune you know like it's got a great melody a great singer i i was kind of like a closet listener to michelle branch and like britney spears when i was a little kid i'd lock myself in the room and <laughs> listen to that music um but in ninth grade i remember listening to coldplay and their song clocks i believe was playing on a track was playing on a a peter pan movie trailer mm -hmm. i just remember being so moved by the the magic that song and that trailer kind of created for me in that moment and i remember going home and immediately learning the piano and the singing because i always had played piano before then i kind of sang but not really but that was the first song that I really found this a deeper connection to music. And so for me, I feel like the inspiration kind of comes from this almost spiritual sense of like really being in tune with myself and, and almost like my highest self. I feel like I'm really at my 
highest spiritual peak when I'm singing. And it's not a religious thing. It's more of like a just a freedom, a mm -hmm. sense of freedom where it's like you can really just be yourself in that moment and feel everything that you want to feel without shame, without, you know, worrying about what people think. Yes. Like, it's just this moment where you just feel the most connected to yourself, to your instrument, to the song, and to people around you. And I, I crave that feeling. I really love feeling so present, you know. Um, and it's, just, yeah, I guess it's a sense to really connect to myself and, and hopefully to other people around me. And the inspiration kind of comes from that sense of being able to reach that, you know, higher sense of self. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. When you're flying like that, I think other people get to fly with you and that will inspire them to find exactly what you found or their own version of it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the idea. It's like you kind of set others free, you know, through your music. And I feel like that's what music always was for me. And I know there's people out there where music has a similar motivation for them where they listen. It's kind of an escape, you know, from just daily life and not every song will do that for me but when i do find a song like that or an artist you know i become a huge fan and love listening to the music a lot it's been great talking to you yeah ej and, we would yeah. talk to you all day but we're getting the the high yeah, sign in go. our ear that we got to let you talk to other people and share your awesomeness okay <laughs> thank you guys so much I all really right give franklin you. some love for us and we'll be loving on you and watching you and cheering you on and voting for you thank you Thanks. Much love. Take See care. Ya.